Hey everybody, I'm Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar today, and we are here today with with Rodney Jones. How you doing, brother? I'm great. Great to see you, man. You're you're like smiling. You're a happy guy. I am rocking and rolling. Uh, this is going to be a, just a short, sweet, uh, sweet conversation about the Rocky Mountain Archtop Festival and your involvement in that. Sure. So you're going you're going out there. The the event to be there or be square. I'm going out there. Ed Cherry and I are flying out together. As it so as it worked out, we're on the same flight going out. Oh wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so we're we're all about promoting the concert. What what do you got planned? I mean, you, you got a trio out there. Or are you going to hire some guys from there? I mean, how do you have any idea? Yeah, I'm going to use I'm going to use a local rhythm section, and uh, you know, I mean, the way that I'm playing now is is a combination of you know greasy blues. <laughs> Right, right, you know, right in your pocket. Where's the barbecue sauce? My and, and cutting edge, let's go to Mars. You know, it's like I, both of those things exist in the same universe within me. So you're going to get some of both. You're going to get some guitar playing that's like, you know, harkens back to Grant Green and Wes and George Benson. And then you're going to also get like stuff that that hasn't yet really been heard on the guitar. There's a lot of sort of ways I've developed language on the instrument that hasn't really been done before, uh, to my knowledge. So All right, you got a guitar in your hands. Give us an example of what you're talking about. Well, sure. Um, well, let's see. I'll give an example. Let's see what I got here. What is this? By let's the way, me. you're a Benedetto artist. Uh, I was to, as of today. <laughs> you were as of today? or? But I know I am. Uh, okay. So, all right, so you hear the guitar? Right, so that's in the that's but if I play very more like old train McCoy ish type of you yeah. know energetically yeah. but that hasn't really been done on the guitar by someone that has the facility that i have yeah, people right. have done it you know nathan page has has you know brought in kind of the more intervallic sort of things and other people have, have done it in a legato fashion right. but no one that had sort of more of a george benson type of fluency adapted the more modern vocabulary on the guitar until wow. hello hello you're the guy you know it's really funny that you say that because that's um that's what i've been uh I, the word complain is a little bit too strong but that's what i've been trying to tell people for a long time i said you know uh and fareed hawk is a big um advocate of this as well you know got to get the the instrument out of the 50s you know i mean or the, the 40s well that that's right i mean if you think of the evolution of the you know the guitar compared to that of the piano right you know you can look at even just within miles davis's group you could look at like you know red garland and then winton kelly and then a giant leap with like Herbie, right? You know, or even Bill Evans with the voicing. But if you look at the guitar development, you know, you have West Montgomery, and then the harmonic concept expanding into the modern language of McCoy and Train and Joe Henderson and that sort of aesthetic right. didn't really happen by players that were the known guys. You know, George Benson right. went, you know, had amazing facility, could, clearly could play anything, but you know, is more of playing, you know, vamp and commercial music, you know, right. and standard based things and the other players you know went more into the fusion direction in the 70s and that right. kind of thing so where are the guitar players of the late 60s the only guy i can really think of that really sort of did that language successfully was nathan page the guitar player who lived who was from florida right. uh, who played with jimmy smith for a while who played you know brought some more modern language to the guitar but he was limited by by facility well, if you think about the guys that played with Miles uh, during that, you know, his his period there, there was uh, guys that were rock influenced guys. Correct. You know, they knew the language. I mean, Mike Stern, John Schofield, you know, all those guys. Um, yeah, who, who are great players, brilliant players. Yeah, yeah, but they're definitely more. Um, they're they're. Um, well, Sco, I mean, they they know the language. I mean, they do know the language, and they. John Schofield absolutely got, does. They've got facility and all that, but they were playing it with a different voice for sure. I mean, they're playing on, you know, with 
basically guitars that would be used in rock and roll with that sort of that sensibility of tone. I think that's what I think. But yeah, I, I think that's right. I mean, and here again, none of this is like you know to put it down or say it's not good because it's beautiful. I love right. the way he plays, and John Schofield is a brilliant, you know, amazing, incredible guitar player. To me, I oh, love yeah. his. Yeah. I'm just saying that the aesthetic of like you're picking up an acoustic guitar and playing modern language, right? It, it does. It didn't really exist. No, it it was wasn't happening, uh, and not so much now even. You know. Well, that's. I mean, again, that's what Fareed's talking about. But I mean, there are guys. I mean, you know, uh, there are guys out there that are that are doing it, but it it hasn't hit like the main. Who, who are those guys, Bob? Who, I want to know those guys. Who who's um, the guys? Jonathan Kreisberg. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, it's a, it's a little something a little different. It's not exactly. Yeah, no, John, John, yeah, it is. I agree with you. It's it's a, it's something a little different. But I mean, he's a he's a brilliant guitar player, but just a different thing. Yeah, and the, the, this conversation could get, could get a little bit weird because um the guy that's uh yeah well the bottom line is there's lots of lineages and lots of uh of directions the guitar has gone since right. the six and sent into the seventies and thing very few players have skewed to the the you know and very few musicians have skewed to the the coltrane quartet in, in more players skewed towards the miles davis aesthetic with ron and herbie and wayne and that sort of sa sound then right. with mccoy elvin and jimmy garrison and coltrane that kind of driving playing you know at all costs long solos going in that that wasn't really a popular thing for musicians in general and guitarists in particular now why do you think that I, it's because i think it's i think it's extremely difficult i think it requires um it requires a love and a commitment to loving that sound i love that sound so i'm willing to do the work to play that way because it's not just it's not something I'm interested in. It's something I feel organically connected to. It's something I genuinely love. Like I love the blues, right. you know, the difference in playing a blues. Yeah. You're going to hear a lot of people play a blues at, at the Rocky Mountain, but not everybody's going to be playing the blues. You know, there's a difference in playing a blues and playing the blues. All right, different I, got, I got, I got, you got to tell me, all right, what's, I'm going to ask you the question. What do you mean when you say there's a difference between playing a blues and the blues? Well, playing a blues is knowing the blues form and playing the language of playing on a blues. Okay. So playing the blues is, is, you know, your dog died, your wife left you and you have something to share. Oh, you, you, you feel it from your heart. I mean, where it's connected organically to some part of your life experience. When you pick up the guitar to play the blues, there's no faking it. There's no like, oh, I'm going to play this tune. There's right. no thought uh, in it. I'm so glad that you uh, had said that because the reason I didn't play, you know, uh, you know, the rock blues stuff, you know, I don't have this is the wrong guitar. But the reason I didn't play all that stuff that the that a lot of guys were playing is because I didn't feel it was authentic to me. There you go. You know, and, I mean, and that and that is being true to yourself. And I, 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 yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel this is this isn't authentic to me. What the hell do I know about? At the time, I was in my forties. You know, I was a kid from the suburbs, white kid from the suburbs, um, you know, all that kind of what the hell do I know about being, you know, 66, 72 years old, living in Mississippi, having grown up with parents that were, you know, in that. Well, whole. well, here's the remarkable thing, though, that that is that is one way the blues expresses. But the blues is not racially dependent and it's not it's not even culturally dependent. It's human dependent. If oh, you've ever if you've ever lost someone that you loved, if you've ever wanted love, if you've ever felt alone, if you've ever wondered what your what road you're going to take, or felt deserted, or or you know frustrated and trying to get to something, all people have the blues. All people can relate to that. But you are you are singing a song that I've been writing for a long time. You know what I'm saying, but not everybody goes there. Yeah. You know, I learned this from Lena. I, I here's what I learned from Lena Horn. Maybe I, maybe I told you before, no. but when I played with Lena, she would she after she would leave the stage, she would be drinking sweat, tears pouring out of her eyes to the point where I was really concerned. I'm like, Lena, are you okay? And she said, What people don't understand is when I sing these songs, I have to live the lyric. I can't fake I it. When I, I sing know. Body and Soul, if I sing, I you know, know, man, I'm living those words. I'm right connecting. Now everything I've ever experienced and living it. That's much different. Look, you go to a jam session today oh, with young guitar players and you play, you say, hey, let's play, uh, let's play, you know, Invitation. Where's that, you know, hey, you want to play it in the original key? What's that, D minor? No, it's a C minor. You know the movie it's from? No. Oh, yeah, no, 
no, no. Yeah, no, you're, you're you, know what I'm saying? you are so singing out of my hymnal. I can't believe it. It's uh, unbelievable. Am I saying it like you wrote it? Yeah, you're singing like I wrote it, man. You're you're, <laughs> preaching, you're not preaching to the choir. You're preaching to a preacher. I'm preaching to the minister. There you uh, go. Well, a fellow preacher. Uh, I, you know, see, I'm an actor. You know, I mean, I've been studying acting now for a number of years. And, you know, the thing you have to do as an actor is get into the character, really feel that character. Well, it's, you know, I tell you, Bob, I use acting as an analogy for students, and, and it's this. If you don't connect to this thing of playing the blues, right. then you're always a great actor who, no matter how great your performance, you don't know the point of the play. Uh -huh. you, know, you, you know, when you play the blues, when you connect to your, your organic, true, deepest self in the music, then you know the point of playing the music. You know the why of it, the point of the play. You might be a great actor. Think of all the great guitar players who can play their behinds off, facility. Yeah chords language all this stuff and yeah. i listen you know what it's like green means with no salt i i listen man i'm telling you you're you're, you're, dead, on, you're dead on it i, I know I, it's healthy but you know no no I, I, I'll, I'll tell you you know they say i i i've heard this is, is this was true but i don't know for a fact because i wasn't there but they that in the days of when people pitched sinatra songs you know when in those days um he would get this get the he didn't want to hear the music didn't want to hear the melody he would get the lyric take himself self away from everybody and read the lyric. And if he didn't emotionally connect with the lyric, he didn't want to hear the, he didn't want to hear the Absolutely. Music. Lena was the same way. Yeah. So, and that I'm also a, also a singer and that's the way that I, I learned that from Frank. If I, if I, if I can't sing this with emotion, so get back to your playing top five things you need to do to play the blues authentically from your heart. I mean, what would you okay. tell your students? Top five things. Top five things to play this the blues not, authentically. Not necessarily in order. Not necessarily in order. Your five things. Top five things. Number one, you must be willing to look yourself in the mirror and tell the truth. If, if you're going to truth tell through your music, it begins with truth telling to yourself. Number one, you have to look in the mirror and tell yourself the truth about where you are, who you are. You have to own the mistakes own the successes, own the failures, own the pain, own it all, accept it as part of what makes you this amazing thing we call a human being, and, you know, or a spiritual being, and be willing to accept that. That's number one. Two, you've got to be willing to be vulnerable enough to demonstrate in front of other people and not be afraid of judgment. You've got to be willing to say, yeah, you know what? This is what I believe. This is who I am. This is what my life experience is. This is who I am. This is what it is. That vulnerability invites the audience in because people don't want perfect music. They want real music. They don't want something that's, that's you know, pandering to them. They want to feel something. And I think if you're going to ask someone for even five minutes of their life to listen to you, they're never going to get that time back of their life. That's five minutes they're not going to have in their life. You have to give them something real and of value. And that's got to be true. So number one, you got to look yourself in the mirror and tell the truth. Number two, you have to be vulnerable. Right. Number three, you have to love the people you're playing for. If you're playing for you and it's about you, you miss the point of music. Music is communication and it's language. It's sharing love through sound. And you've got to be willing to not make it about you and make it about us or make it about them. You've got to have something you want to share. Number four, you've got to recognize that when you play the blues, Sometimes you're telling a story, but sometimes you're creating a mood, but sometimes you're painting a picture. Sometimes you're sharing a dream. You've got to be willing to, to recognize that the blues is much more than just my, my baby left me or my dog died. It, it is much more universal than that. It speaks to people in every language, in every culture, every religion, no matter who you love, no matter how you love, no matter what color your skin, the blues is something that if you are a human being on earth, you have it in one form or the other and five if you're going to play blues for people if you're going to go out there and play the blues have as your intention understand that your intention is to make life better you know our blakey said the music washes away the dust of everyday life if you're going to play the blues there's something you can bring that the person's not going to get from having a lamp or a hamburger or going to a movie. There's some other quality, something that's soul to soul, human to human, that's so organic and so true and so important 
It's so needed in the world we're living in. It's something that no AI can provide, no computer can give. It's something that only an artist and a listener can engage in this dance, this rhythm of life, this rhythm of music. That is the intention of the blues for me. Now, how that comes out, if you're true to yourself and you're a, you know, a 70 year old man from Mississippi, it comes out through that lens. You know, if you're a white guy from Southern California, it comes out through that lens. The most important thing is not the lens. The most important thing is the truth and the authenticity. Are you telling your truth? Not the truth, because that's going to be different for everybody. But what is your truth? And are you willing to tell it? Man, I'm telling you something. Uh, that That is the that last three minutes that you talked is the wisest thing that anyone has ever said on this channel. And wow. I totally agree with you. Leave that in. <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to leave that in. I, I promise you. I'm going to probably cut out a lot of the beginning stuff. But that, this top five thing, um, that, I mean, what I didn't even learn that. I mean, I, you know, I used to be, I, I studied classical voice, studied guitar. And in, in my singing, I was more concerned about, you know, the intonation. I was more concerned about the, you know, the phonetics of this, the articulation, all that kind of stuff. And I didn't really start thinking about the meaning of the lyric to me till late in life. And so for you to impart that wisdom and, and hopefully kids, you know, to say, what do I need to do instead of going, that's, if, if is what's in your heart, go for it. But if you're just showing off, then the gonna... mission of every artist to me, the my well, almost every my mission every right. time is to play the notes that want to be played. Mm. That's it, Rodney. Uh, you're the best. You are the best. You've got it all going on, man. You got the facility. You're playing your ass off. Uh, I watch a lot of your stuff. Um, you know, because you you broadcast from that studio. So, I do. How many times a week do you do that? Uh, you know, it, you know, it used to be. You know, because, I mean, the, the reason I did that, I guess you know, you know, I had this career-ending injury on my hand. I couldn't yeah. play all of 2018. I couldn't really play. Yeah. So my therapy was to play all the time. Mm -hmm. you know? And I, so, I, you know, I just, I've decided, you know, that the playing I do is different when someone's listening. You wow. know, it's just human nature. When someone is listening, there's a different dynamic in effect, just what we're talking about. So I found that there was a value for me in turning on the camera, even if it was just a couple people. In the beginning, it was just a couple people, guitar players mostly, listening. And then later, I discovered, oh, no, people were, you know, when I stopped doing it, then I would get emails like, hey, we have, we missed you. We haven't seen you. Where are yeah. you? How are you? So then I realized, no, people are getting some benefit from that. I, I, so I watched a couple times. I mean, three or four times I tuned in. I went, you know, because I was listening to what you're going. I'm going, shit. Yeah, it's practice. I'm not performing. I don't no, I understand. Turn. I got it. I, 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 I want it enough. I want people to see. I want people to see what enough love, discipline, devotion, and focus can yield. Because if I can do it, you can do it. I'm not more talented than anybody. I don't know more than anybody, but I do the work, and I know that consistency. You know. Repetition is the mother of skill, and skilled repetition is the mother of excellence. And I'm always looking to be, to repeat the things that are, you know, that are beautiful, to play the things in my heart as beautifully as I can. This is my time on earth. I got, I got this shot to do it. I want to give it my best. I want to live full and die empty. Man, you're gonna be out. Let's just, let's just, uh, let's just cap this thing off. You're gonna be at the Rocky Mountain Archtop Festival. You're one of the two major headliners there, you and Ed Cherry. Um, oh, I didn't even know that. You know more yeah, about that? Yeah, you're one of the two um, you know, major headliners. I talked to Peter about that, Peter Hendrickson, who was the producer of the show, Hendrickson Amplifier. I love his amplifiers. Oh, yeah. Well, we all do. I'm, there's one right there. Yeah, um, I got one. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, but, um, yeah. That I, bought, that I bought, by the way. I just want people to know, like, I'm not saying this because oh it's a gimme and you know I'm gonna you know there's nothing. Mm -hmm. I I played at a club called the Zinc Bar in New York, yeah. and I, they had a Hendrickson amp there, and I plugged in. I was like oh, I didn't want to bring an amp. I just plugged into the amp, and everybody, all the students, all the people came up and said, "Man, your guitar sounds incredible. That's the best I've ever heard you sound." And <laughs> I listened and I listened to it, and it was. And so <laughs> I said, "Hey man, I, I actually I called Charles Carlini who was producing the gig. I said, yeah. hey." how do I get in touch with Peter? And he gave me the information. And so I called, you know, and I bought the amplifier. That's how much I loved it. So just so you know, you know, it's not, it's not, I'm not endorsing because 
you know, for money. I'm endorsing for love. No, I understand. Well, there's, there's not, you know, um, yeah, the, the money in this industry would would feed a starving family with a pizza. What can I tell you? Well, how's that joke go? You know. Yeah. What what's a what's the yeah. difference in a, pizza, a large keys pizza and a jazz musician? Yeah. Right. A pizza could feed a family of four. Family yeah. Four. So it's uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, the great Rodney Jones. The great. <laughs> the great Rodney Jones. Well, you are. You 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 know the you guys that are as dedicated as you that have put in the time that you have that, that you know that. You know, when, when people hear a couple of chords and some notes and all that kind of stuff, what they need to understand is not that, you know, that that you've got this to draw from. That's right. And you're making this statement from this to draw from. I am. And this. And, and well, of, of course, it's coming, you know, so you got, uh, you're going to express yourself in all these ways. And you're choosing because your heart's telling you to. This is the way I'm going to express myself, as opposed to a guy that he only knows three licks. Correct. And that's how he's so, <laughs> so and you guys might play the same lick. I mean, who knows? I mean, he might he might just have that, you know, that triad or that whatever it is down, and you happen to play it because that's what was worked for the tune and the way you wanted to do it. But you know, the, the guys like you that that have the language together and all that, I mean, people don't know you were at Juilliard for a lot of years. Um, teaching and it's obviously one of the top schools in the world and um, you know so you you know you're not just some dude you know I know I got that category down um, and I will mention I do have a number of courses where I teach this stuff yeah, like all I have to do is say jazz guitar jazz guitar scholars at gmail.com Bob Baker for jazz guitar today talking to Rodney Jones about the top five things that you should do when you play the blues or play okay. any music actually Right. Not when you play a blues, you play the blues. The blues. I love that. Not a blues, the blues. And uh, talking about his uh, his trip out to the Rocky Mountain Archdiocese Festival, we're all looking forward to. I'll be there. Yeah, I can't wait. That'll we'll be press good some flesh, brother. I love Buddy, it. Take care, brother. Thank you for oh, doing well, this. Today. Thank you so much. And thanks for all you do for the music, too. I'm, I'm trying, brother. I'm trying. You're doing it. See you, man. Bye bye. Right, take care. Bye bye.